It's a tough group to follow. My name is Gregory Stenstrom. I'm from Delaware County. I'm a father, a family man. I was a former commanding officer and executive officer in the Navy. I'm a veteran of foreign wars. I'm the CEO of my own private company. I'm a data scientist. I'm a forensic computer scientist. I'm an expert in security and fraud. Uh, Leah had recruited me uh, for this election, um, and uh, I was glad I uh, thank you for that. Yeah. So for the first part of the day, I was a poll watcher in the city of Chester, and uh, I was with just another uh, former U.S. Marine officer, and uh, the two of us were the only GOP poll watchers uh, in the city of Chester, which is about 40,000 people. Uh, because of the consolidation for COVID, uh, there were seven polls that we were allowed to, you know, that we were able to make it to in 22 precincts. What we saw out there was pretty orderly. Um, and uh, exciting. People were excited to vote. Uh, one of the things we saw out in the field was that people, uh, quite a few people had done mail-in ballots. So they came in and they hadn't uh, been updated in the Delaware County database yet. So they would come in and say, I, you know, the database is not showing me on the database. I'd like to vote. So the process, uh, one of the processes was to uh, give them a, uh, uh, a provisional ballot. And, um, and then they would vote provisionally, and then later on their vote would be sorted out. Um, that didn't happen. Uh, I, I observed, and the gentleman that was with me uh, observed uh, seven different polls where uh, the people were given a, a regular ballot. So they cast a vote and put it in. You know, we let it happen a few times. You know, we didn't jump all over them. You know, it happened a couple of times. We went up. Uh, in all cases, the election judges were very um, forthcoming. Um, very polite, they apologized and they said they couldn't do it. But that um, somewhat spurred me to go down to the counting center, uh, which Leah described. It's on the Seaport Ave. It's a, it's a remote building, not much around it. And I wanted to take a look. All day long, I had been told that um, there were 10 to 20 GOP poll watchers down there and that everything was well in hand. And out of curiosity, I decided to go down. Uh, I arrived at 6 o'clock. Um, with four other gentlemen, uh, again, former military and some good citizens from, the, from Delaware County. And um, we weren't allowed to get in until uh, 11 o'clock at night, and we had to get some um, legal help to get us in. So it took us five hours to get upstairs. Um, after that, um, you know, what we saw here is, uh, what I saw is I really think the, the, the crux of this in Delaware County is uh, as an expert in this, I think it's impossible to verify the validity of about 100,000 100, to 120,000 votes. Now, Delaware County has got 425,000 registered voters. Approximately 300,000 of them voted. I don't know what the exact number ended up. Uh, Mayor Giuliani uh, had nailed that number. But of that number, uh, over 100,000 are in question in my mind. What I saw as a forensics expert was an election process that was forensically destructive in the manner it was conducted, with the envelopes being separated from the ballots and gone to the other side of the room. And the problem with that from being forensically destructive is that when you go to do a recount, okay, the machines did a pretty good job of recounting, so if I have 120,000 ballots, mail-in ballots at one side of the room and envelopes at the other side of the room, it's still going to come out 102,000 votes for President, uh, Vice President uh, Biden and 18,000 votes for President Trump. I don't care how many times you recount those votes, you know, the ballot's going to come out the same every time. So the notion of a recount in a forensically destructive process is, is, uh, doesn't work very well. Um, what we saw there, what I saw there, was a chain of custody in all cases that was broken. It was broken for the mail-in ballots, the drop box ballots, the election day USB V card flash drives, in all cases, the chain of custody and the procedures that were defined by the Delaware County Board of Elections and election process review were all, they didn't follow one. I, I, I couldn't even redline this multi page document because the entire document would be, uh, they didn't follow any of the procedures. So I personally observed. Um, USB V cards being uploaded to the voting machines by the, uh, the uh, voting machine warehouse supervisor on multiple occasions. I saw this personally. 
I brought it to the attention of the deputy sheriff who was there stationed, who was a senior law enforcement officer, and I brought it to the attention of the clerk of elections. Um, I brought it to their attention. I objected, and I said, uh, this person is not being observed. He's not part of the process that I can see, and he's walking in with baggies, which we have pictures of, and it was submitted to, in our affidavits, and he was sticking these USBs into the machines. So uh, I personally witnessed over that, that happened 24 times, over 24 times. Um, we have multiple other witnesses at SART, including Democrat poll watchers. And we were told, um, I was told the next day uh, by uh, the uh, solicitors, uh, via, well, actually not the solicitor, but the attorney that we had secured, that they said every election they leave a couple of USBs in the voting machines and they're brought back and generally the warehouse manager comes over and puts them in. So in talking to uh, the U.S. Uh, Attorney General uh, McSwain and other uh, law enforcement officers, uh, I found out that was not the case, that generally, uh, you know, more than, more than two is unusual. So they denied they did it, but um, as of today, 47 USPV cards are missing, and they're nowhere to be found. So I was told personally that these 32, uh, these 24 to 30 cards that were uploaded um, weren't there. Those cards, uh, I demanded that the, uh, they didn't update the vote live time. They only updated it about once every two or three hours. I demanded they updated the vote so I could see what the, the, um, what the, what, what the result was. And it was uh, 50,000 votes. And I think as a computer scientist, an American, and a patriot, it doesn't matter who those 50,000 votes were. I'll tell you they were for Vice President Biden. But what was shocking to me as an American, as someone who has uh, gone to sea, gone to war, that um, that could even happen. So several other things that uh, came up was on Thursday, it took us three days for them to obey the court order that I secured with Leah's help and the help of the Thomas More Society, uh, who we thank uh, incredibly uh, good patriots. They, they got us in there. Uh, they got the order for us to get in and watch it, uh, look at the back offices, which were locked uh, for five minutes every two hours. I went in, I was the first one allowed to go in at 1.30 on Thursday, and then again at 3.30 for five minutes. The uh, county solicitor had a stopwatch on the first time, I was not allowed to touch anything. The second time, I did. What I observed in the locked room in the back office was 70,000 unopened mail-in ballots. They were in boxes of 500, stacked in neatly. The gentleman that came in with me is a, was a Demo uh, Democrat poll watcher, is a forensic pathologist, a very detailed, very dedicated man, and he took meticulous notes as well. And I verified with him, are you seeing what I'm seeing? We both agreed as GOP poll watchers and a Democrat poll watcher that we had uh, witnessed 70, 60 to 70,000. We had a little bit of a disagreement there. The problem with that was by that time, the mail-in ballots had already been counted. So 120,000 mail-in ballots had already been counted, posted, and done. So my question is, where do the 70,000 ballots go? And nobody knows. We have a picture in here of a large number of boxes that I took that were filled with what appeared to be ballots sitting by the Blue Crest machine. They were there for about three hours, and then they disappeared. I thought it notable when I watched it, the first when they were taking the ballots up and down. I said, I am an expert in fraud. I saw the ballots going up multiple elevators and racks. And I think a lot of well-meaning people and a lot of honest people were there doing that. They were trying to participate in the process. And I would say that 99% uh, of the people there, uh, the way the process was designed, I believe that people thought it was a, a non-fraudulent process. I heard that said many times. I was, uh, you know, I said, there's no fraud going on here. I said, well, I'm not. You know, I didn't even bring that up, but I think people uh, saw what they wanted to see, and they saw what was intended for them to see. I called it at one point Kabuki Theater, 
I said it was all designed for us to see it. It was entertaining. There were cameras on it. When we finally got into the back room where the votes were being ingested, as a data scientist, I want to see where, where the data is coming in. And I wanted to know the universe of the votes. Well, the universe of the votes was only supposed to be 120,000 mail-in ballots. We were told there were 6,000 ballots remaining. So I said, okay, we have a universe of 126,000 votes. And then when I get back there, the universe wasn't 126,000 votes. The universe was 200,000 votes. So that's a problem. I think the last thing I wanted, a couple of other things, is the Blue Crest sorter machine uh, was only manned by one person. You know, people ask me all the time, how do people commit crimes? Um, I know there's a lot of theories here, and I always look for the simplest thing. People that stuff, the, you know, sticking USB sticks in, putting ballots in. Very simple thing, only takes a couple of people. Doesn't take a big conspiracy. I think people look at things and they use inflammatory words and, uh, you know, like fraud and so forth. As a forensic computer scientist, my interest is in the data. Where did it go? Where did the spoilage go? How did the data come in and go out of the system? So I think as a scientist, we need to look at that, we need to audit that. What was really upsetting to me, and the most upsetting, was I had um, spoke to multiple law enforcement agencies and literally begged uh, multiple law enforcement agencies. I said, go in, and I said, in order to prove, your, you know, prove that nothing's happening, you need to either exonerate yourselves in the process or refute what I'm saying, please. It's a very simple process. Just go get the forensic evidence from the computers. It's a simple process. You, take the, you turn the computer off. It's non-destructive. It takes moments, maybe half an hour, 20 minutes, to do it properly and collect the evidence. You open the computer up. You take a, a, a device called a bit blocker. You put it in the hard drive. It's done under the observation of law enforcement officers. They take a forensic image of the drive put it all back together, it wouldn't have taken more than an hour to, to image all five machines. That was never done, despite my objections, and that was three weeks ago. Lastly, when they said, they said, well, we've got all the forensic records and so forth, we just learned two days ago that virtually all chain of custody logs, records, yellow sheets, everything, was gone. All forensic evidence, all custody sheets in Delaware County are gone. They had a signing party where they sat down and, and poll workers were invited back to recreate those logs and our understanding as of today was that they were unsuccessful in getting them all. So we have a situation where we have 100,000 ballots to 120,000 ballots, both mail-in and USB they're in question. Now, there's no cure for this. There's no remedy for this. As a home, as a home charter, we, can, we could have a re-election in Delaware County for our own representatives within our own town. But there is no cure for that for the President of the United States. And I don't believe as a citizen and an observer to this that anybody could certify that vote in any good conscience. And if the Democrats that have a part of this process, you know, were so, you know, had done things, followed their own procedures, which they created almost unilaterally, we would be in a situation where they could exonerate themselves and they could say, Mr. Stenstrom, you've been misinformed. We have evidence here that refutes what you say. But that's not the case. They can't do that. So I say, if you can't certify that vote, and you can't certify 100,000 votes out of 300,000, then you can't certify Delaware County. And I'm done, and thank you for your time and patience. <laughs>